Hello, my dear guinea pigs. It's Friday. Yay! It's day five of our first week in our raw food experiment. Still don't know what we're going to call it, but I think the general consensus so far has been that everybody's in agreement that we don't really like the name fat in the name of our experiment that we're doing. So we're on the same page with that. And I've thought about calling it raw food rehab, and I may, I may still do that, but um, I'm still open for suggestions on that, but that's not the most important part of why we're here today. What I really wanted to talk to you about today, you know, just to further the discussion on hydration and how we can make that happen, I wanted to talk about something that all of you guys all already probably know about, and that is the miracle of the young Thai coconut. And um, we're going to just kind of discuss a little bit about it today. First of all, um, you can find these at your health food store, typically Whole Foods, um, places we'll like that. mold off of it. And I'm going to open it up, and I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit about what I've learned over the last four years of picking a good Thai coconut. Um, also, you can get these at your Asian market if you have an Asian market where you live. But um, this coconut is really a great coconut because when you look at the exterior of the white coconut, if you see anything on the bottom that looks like uh, maybe a slash of a dark coloration, discoloration, like maybe it looks purple or black or even like ink, dark blue, that means that the coconut has most likely gone rancid on the inside um, and has started to leak out and cause a molding situation. Um, and so when I see those, I don't buy those. But anyway, this particular coconut is intimidating to a lot of people, and it was totally intimidating to me when I first got into raw food, and I'm like, well, how do you – how do you get into this thing? So what I, my favorite way, and I'm also going to post a link of like it being professionally opened on YouTube, but my way, and I'm not going to open it, I'm just going to show you. I use, a, first of all, a serrated knife, and I cut, well, I said I wasn't going to, but I shave off, well, what you're going to do is you're going to shave off this husky part on the top, and you're actually going to get down to, and I just go all the way around, shave all that off, you're going to get down to actually kind of like a hard coconut shell. And once you're down to that, you're going to take a knife like this or maybe more like a meat cleaver or something like that, and you're just going to whack down with this little sharp point right here, whack down into it. And most of these coconuts have a sweet spot, and when you find that, it's like the whole little, this little circle thing will just go, it just kind of pops up a little bit, and then you can pry it open. Okay, the thing about these coconuts, and a lot of you already know this, but um, it's probably one of the best liquids that you can put into your body. And I just I pulled some things up on the internet, and I wanted to share them with you. Coconut water is the liquid found inside young coconuts. It has a natural balance of sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, making it one of the most healthy electrolyte drinks. So um, it's obviously a lot better for you than Gatorade. There's no junk in it. It's low in fat and calories, and it contains no cholesterol. This natural isotonic beverage has the same level of electrolyte balance as we have in our blood, and it's been used intravenously to stabilize electrolytes. Um, let's see. It's very sterile inside the nut. So there's this big controversy on young Thai coconuts that the um, conventionally grown organic coconuts aren't any good and that you should spend more money and have your organic coconuts shipped into you. And that's, that's fine if you want to do that, but I'm just telling you by the, the, you know, the green outside, then you've got all this husk, then you've actually got this hard nut surrounding it. The water inside of a conventional um, Thai coconut is most likely going to be very sterile. Now, the organic ones may have a little bit more nutrition in it, but the, I would just say I wouldn't get into any kind of big worry about that. That's my opinion, and I've heard a lot of health educators who I respect say the same thing. So if you can find them, I mean, a lot of times, I hate to say Walmart, but I actually, down the street from me, I have seen them at Wally World, and they were less expensive than Whole Foods. And the Asian market is even cheaper, but I have to drive across town and also have to deal with the fish stench in my Asian market. So, you know, but I love the coconuts. Let me read a little bit more on here. Coconut water is a universal donor 
being identical to human blood plasma. Plasma makes up 55% of human blood. So by drinking coconut water, it's almost like we're giving ourselves an instant blood transfusion. Um, let's see if there's anything else. It says it's often been used to save lives in third world countries. They put coconut water in IVs for people and when they don't have blood supply, like during wartime or whatever. So, I mean, I just recently found that out, and I thought that was so cool. So, um, along with your water intake, along with herbal teas, juices, and smoothies, this is, like, the most perfect thing that you can drink in the summertime because, you know, like, if you're out in the yard or you're jogging or you're working in your garden, you know you're getting dehydrated. And so drinking, like, I love to crack these open and pour the juice. I usually strain the juice put it into like a mason jar, and so keep it cold in the refrigerator. And when you've been out working in your yard, you come in and you take a big slug of that, whoo, it's really, it's really good. So I really um, recommend that for you. I also wanted to say that Sundays, every Sunday, is going to be our weigh-in day. And I know some of you really don't want to weigh every week, but for those of you who do, and I prefer that most of you do, because what I'm wanting to do, and if you haven't lost any weight, don't stress about it. I mean, just I want everyone who has lost weight to chime in on a thread that I'll put up late Saturday night, and I just want you to report in um, how many pounds you've lost, because I'm going to add that number up as we go, go forward so we can see what kind of progress we're making as a group. And... Um, I've been doing really well, but, you know, I've eaten a couple things that probably aren't, like, the best. But um, last night I went to a raw food meetup that was just, it, I didn't have anything to do with it other than just showing up and bringing a dish. And I really, I was ready to move in this lady's house. I mean, it was so, it was a big, fabulous home, and there was all this food, and it was way out in South Tulsa. And I'm just like, can I just move in here? And she had all this gadgetry. She had a bio pad, I think it's called, which, you know, I laid on that and I about went to sleep, and she has, you know, the rebounder, and she has all this stuff, because she is a cancer survivor, and so she'd really gotten deep into natural health and alternative health, and I mean, she's, she is one of my new best friends now, whether she likes it or not, but I just had a great night, and then today, um, I'm trying to think of what I had today. Oh, I drank the rest of the smoothie that I made from yesterday, and I put, it was Swiss chard, Hemp seeds, frozen cherries, and if you have you all ever heard of barberries, Matt Monarch sells those in his um, online store, and they're really like they're kind of almost like cranberries. They're real tart, so I put a handful of those in and some cacao powder. Yes, I did because I couldn't. I, for some reason, I wasn't waking up well yesterday, so I put a little bit of cacao in there and a banana. So it was like this cherry chocolate banana shake and it was so good so I had a little bit of that leftover drank that this morning um, and then I had more raspberries which I've loved and then I made this raw corn salad last night for the meetup and I'm telling you it is so good too and I'm going to post the recipe for that as soon as I get this video plugged into my computer to upload because that corn salad corn's really like in season right now in a lot of places and I just saw the corn right off the cob and mix it in with, like, red bell peppers and tomatoes and garlic, um, salt and pepper. I'm not sure what else. But anyway, I'll post that for you because it's a wonderful summer salad chilled, and it lasts for three or four days in your refrigerator. So it's one of those things you can just make it in bulk and just keep it in your refrigerator. And there's something about corn. I know a lot of people don't like corn. They say, that was too hybrid and whatever. But this was locally grown Bixby corn, which is about maybe 30 miles south of where I live, and it's um, they, the place where I get it, they use a lot of heirloom seeds, so I don't seem to have a problem with corn that I'm aware of, other than I really like it in the summertime, so anyway, I hope you're having a great day five, and even if you've stumbled along the way since we've been doing this experiment, just don't get stressed out about it, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and just get right back on the program and I'm going to be posting more and more recipes and tomorrow I think that we'll go ahead and finish our discussion on hydration and I want to talk to you about my experiences with chia seeds so I'll look forward to um, coming to you on video after I go to the farmers market tomorrow so everybody look, looking forward to the weekend and I'll see you tomorrow bye bye